Hi, and welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. I tell you every day we are fighting a winnable war. I got a great story from the UK about a British mother. Brian Fisher is my name. The program is Focal Point. You're listening to High Definition Radio on Focal Point. More content per cubic inch of air than any other place on your radio dial. At least that is our goal. Here's a British mother, and her daughter, her unborn baby, was diagnosed by doctors with something called oligohydramnios. Now, oligo, I know, is from a Greek word meaning little or few. Hydra is for water or fluid. So it's amniotic fluid. She was diagnosed with a low level of amniotic fluid. This is at 20 weeks. Your baby's suffering from this low level of amniotic fluid. She was told that her child is going to die, only had a 10% chance of survival. Termination is the best path forward. So they were putting some heat on her to abort uh, her baby. But rather than listen to these doctors, she started keeping a diary. In fact, she had been keeping a diary from the minute that she found out she was pregnant because she wanted to preserve a written record for her child. It turned out to be a son of how much they loved him and how much they wanted him. So when the doctors are putting heat on her to abort, she says not going to do it. And uh, she carried the baby to full term, delivered via, well, not full term. He was delivered via a cesarean section at 30 weeks of age, came out screaming. She said, defied everybody. He's a little miracle, she says. Um, he, it was a nightmare pregnancy, but every day he was hanging on was a blessing he has now 6 pounds, 14 ounces, and has no health problems. So God bless that woman for protecting the sanctity of the life of her baby. Let's grab some phone calls. Let's go to David in West Lafayette, Indiana. David, thanks for calling. Thanks for waiting. What's on your mind? Hey, Brian. Always an honor to talk to you. Uh, thanks for calling. I have three, well, basically four quick points I would like to make and see what you say about it. Uh, the girl that was taken away from her parents. Yes. Um, I'm curious if those parents are conservatives or Christians. Um, Also, on the the bake-the-cake issue, uh, most places where my wife and I have ever went, we never bring up sexuality at all when we have things uh, made for us. So they're deliberately trying to set up the business people. And one of them is the adoptions, um, um, lesbian couples and homosexual couples here in Indiana get a big... uh, uh, money uh, uh, thing for uh, helping them uh, live a stipend because of the uh, adoption. And the other thing is um, in the universal, I think it's the universal commercial code, uh, uh, uniform commercial code, um, when you enter into a contract voluntarily, then you're liable for a bill. And I was thinking since we don't enter into the Obamacare uh, um, voluntarily, how can we be liable for that money? Yeah. <laughs> and that's yeah. it. Well, that's, you know, that's, that's a good observation. And, you know, the reality is, I, I, I mean, David, you know, it, it, it's a weird thing because what Obama is essentially doing is compelling you, like you were saying, compelling us to enter into a contract with a vendor against our will, against our judgment, and nobody nobody can rightly, ethically, morally, or constitutionally be compelled to enter into a contract with anybody else. In fact, you know, you, you think about it, David, it's a good point. I hadn't thought about this before, but if you are um, if you are coerced into some kind of contractual obligation, that's considered null and void. If it's under duress, that is not considered to be legally valid or legally binding. So you're exactly right. I mean, uh, I, I would think that anybody would want to press that in court, you know, ought to. I mean, with our court system, and the, who, who knows, but would have a legitimate case of action. Look, I am being compelled to enter into this contract with my insurance provider. i got to sign on the dotted line. I've got to obligate myself to a, a schedule of payments, and I don't have a choice about that. I'm being coerced into that. This is under duress. Uh, so it seems to me that from a legal standpoint, you ought to win every time in 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 court. But again, we're we're in a world right now, David, where the law just means virtually nothing to judges or to, I mean, that, that's what's frightening about the time in which we live is to see how little the law and principle and morality and the rule of law even means. 
uh, to these people. You know, it's interesting, David. One other thought before we go to the next caller. Uh, you know, this baker that's in trouble in Oregon, he did business with the these same homosexual customers. I mean, one of the reasons they went into his shop for a cake for their wedding thing is they were used to doing business with him. He had no problem doing business with them. Uh, apparently, he knew their sexual orientation. He just said, look, when it comes to a sodomy-based wedding ceremony where I have to put my name and I have to, by, by producing something for that, show my support for that, that I cannot do. I love you guys. I'm glad that you're customers, but this is something I'm just not going to be able to do uh, for you. Uh, and so now we've got th this Kirsten Powers. We'll talk about this tomorrow. Kirsten Powers in USA Today uh, saying, look, Christians basically should be forced to do it. Christians shouldn't have a choice in a situation like that. And it sounded to me like Andy Stanley saying the kind of saying basically the same thing. Talk about that a little more with, uh, like I say, with Tim Wildman tomorrow on this program. Uh, thank you, David. I appreciate that. Let's go to John, Fort Smith, Arkansas. John, welcome to Focal Point. What's on your mind? John, are you there? Uh, yes, yes. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, I'm here. Go right ahead. I'm kind of, I kind of, I've been listening to you. I would like to ask you, when Obama first ran for president, do you know anybody that believed that he would become president? Did I know anybody that believed that he would become president? Yeah, now I said it on that in the television that he would become president. But even me saying that he would become president, I still really didn't believe it. That's just one question I want to ask. Now, I'm going to hang up when I, I got something. Yeah. So, so I want to be sure, John, before I let you go, you you're... Are, your question. You profess, wait a minute. Let me let me say this. Then I'm gonna hang up. You profess to be a Christian. Christian means follow the Jesus. Right. Now the liberal style people were more like the earlier Christian than anybody according to the way I look at the Bible. Democrats and Republicans. Not a one of them is doing the right thing, but you are on one side. You are not doing the kingdom of God. You're spending more time talking about Democrats and Republicans. What kind of Christian are you? Ain't no follower, Jesus. Well, let me ask you. Let me ask you a question, John. Do you think that the Word of God, the Scriptures, should be our guide toward evaluating and making discerning judgments about all of life? This system. You do. You you agree? Ran you, by man. So, so Number do you? Well, okay, so, do you agree with that, John? That the Bible I, ought to be our guide? Yes or no? I agree. I agree that the Bible is one of the best books. Well, actually, wait a minute. I agree that the teaching of Jesus is the perfect example of what all men and women should strive to be. Okay, so let me ask you this question. So, you think then that we ought to we we ought to take the words of Jesus to be our guide for the way we look at life? If Jesus uh, states a truth or states a principle then we ought to use that, because it comes from Jesus himself, we ought to use that to evaluate everything that goes on around us. We are dealing with man-made laws, man-made rules and regulations. Okay, so but, 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 but about those man-made laws, John, do you think in evaluating those man-made laws, we ought to use the words of Jesus to evaluate those laws to decide whether they're good laws or bad laws? The law say, the law in the old law, uh, actually the orders about, homosexuality. It deals with that in the Old Testament. Now, it deals with all kinds of sin in the Old Testament, too. Now, how can I sing a lot of See, Everybody on this planet belongs to the Creator. He would do the separating. Okay, well, John, you, John, you're, you're aware that homosexuality is identified as a sin, not just in the Old Testament, but also in the New Testament. You're aware of that, right? Okay, all the other sin that's going on. Yeah, but, but John, let me ask you, what other sin are, are people in, in our culture, what other sin are people saying is good? Me, myself, personally, ever trying to be a follower of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm with you there, John. All right, well, John, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to let you go here. Uh, reality is, John, is that what we have to do is take everything we see uh, around us and we line it up against the Word of God. First, we line it up if it's political. We line it up against not only the Word of God but also 
with the Constitution. And then we measure what happens based on those those two standards, the ultimate standard being the Word of God. And, John, you must not have been listening very long to the station. Just yesterday, yesterday I, I waxed eloquent about agreeing with something that a Democrat had said. Why did I agree with him? I didn't agree with him because he's a Democrat. I didn't agree with him because he was a liberal. I agreed with him because he said something that was true. So, John, you give me liberals, you give me Democrats that declare the truth, I will agree with them. I will support them. I will affirm them because that's the criterion. has nothing to do with party affiliation. It has everything to do with principle. All right, one last call. Let's go to Jordan, Paducah, Kentucky. Jordan, welcome to Focal Point. What's on your mind? Hi. Uh, I wanted to make a comment about this homosexuality and how it seems to have become the new normal. Uh -huh. um, I, I saw this that Chevrolet commercial about the families changing and uh, being a veteran I have Facebook to keep in contact with all my military buddies and so I put on there that I would not buy another Chevrolet product. Uh -huh. uh, with that statement I found out how bad this uh, homosexual agenda is because people I've known for years started attacking me uh, saying that I was wrong, I was uh, judging people, and and all these things. So I I commented again, and I, I told them that I am not better than anybody else. Uh, we all sin, uh, and I don't hate anybody. You you hate the sin, but you love the sinner. And for the past two days, that has been twisted around into uh, being to homosexuals and persecuting them. It just, it's, it's crazy that that's the new normal. Yeah, and I agree, and I appreciate your call, and we actually uh, sent out an action alert here from the American Family Association on that Chevy ad that Jordan was talking about. It features homosexuals to homosexuals get married, homosexual parents. In other words, promoting sexual deviancy, deviancy, one of the major automobile companies in America. Focal Point AFR Talk will be back in two. Stay with us.